Hi everyone, my name is Katie, and today I'm going to spend some time answering your most pressing college admissions questions. Our Q&A video series is designed to help you get a better understanding of a wide variety of different admissions topics so that you're prepared to submit your own college applications. If you'd like to give us a question to answer, please leave that question in the comments below this video. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're one of the first to see our next video come out. So let's get started with today's selection of questions. Our first question from Alexa is, what tier would significant, i.e. 15 plus hours a week, family responsibilities fall into? Well, Alexa, thank you so much for asking this question because many other students may also have family responsibilities and they're not sure how to rank them in the tier system. So while of course I don't specifically know the extent of your family responsibilities based on our tiering system, which you can learn more about in our extracurriculars video, Family responsibilities would likely fall into tier four, just because there are, of course, no leadership positions to be taken. However, colleges tend to be fairly understanding about these responsibilities. We'd recommend making your school counselor aware of the responsibilities you've taken with your family so that they can mention it in their own letter of recommendation. Another option is to write about your situation in your college essay if it fits in with a prompt and can relate to your story in a meaningful way. As an overall recommendation, we suggest being as specific as possible when describing those family obligations throughout your applications because it just makes colleges more likely to view them positively. For our next question, Harrison asks, does it matter which region you're from? Is being from the Midwest a disadvantage in the college applications process? Well, Harrison, once again, this is a great question. Your location and geography can affect your admissions chances both positively and negatively. So let's go through some examples of both. To start out broadly, there are some geographical trends to consider in admissions. First of all, the Ivy League and elite universities on both the East and the West Coast tend to favor students from the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, and California. Obviously, those are big population centers. For applicants who come from more sparsely populated states, you face kind of a double-edged sword. If you're a student who's at the top of your class and has strong extracurriculars, you have a better chance of earning a spot at a top school because schools like this often have a small quota of students from those geographical areas. However, if you're outside the top 5% of your class, your chances do actually decrease. To get even more specific, there are a couple more geographic factors that you wanna keep in mind in the admissions process. Students who apply to in-state colleges have increased admissions chances at less selective schools, Whereas students who apply to more selective state schools, such as say the University of Virginia or the University of California, Berkeley, face a more competitive application pool. Students in Texas also face the top six perfect rule, which means that any student in the top 6% of their graduating high school class can receive automatic admissions to the University of Texas at Austin. So as you can see, there are many geographical factors that play into the admissions process, but since you can't really control these factors, you kind of live where you live, it's important to focus on getting strong grades, participating in leadership positions, and crafting a standout college essay. Admissions officers care first and foremost about who you are as an applicant and what strengths you can bring to their school. So at College Vine, we always recommend focusing on the things that you can control. Moving on to our third question, Nicole asks, how do I fill out the honors section of the common application? Well, with only 100 characters available per honor, Making the most of the Common App honor section can be a challenge, and it's a topic that we hear a lot of stress about from students. But don't worry, we're here to help you break it down. So first things first, let's clarify what specifically you actually are allowed to put in this section. While there's a common misconception that these awards have to be prestigious and well-known to actually merit being listed on your application, the Common App actually qualifies honors as school-wide or local, state, and national awards. Some examples include honor roll, winning biology student of the year at your school, being the county champion for mock trial, being a national Hispanic scholar, or being a top science Olympiad score in Massachusetts. You may also be wondering what's the best way to organize and describe these honors in that Common App Honors section. Well, the strategies for describing activities in the activity section also comes into play here. Honor to be ranked in the order of prestige and the degree of your involvement in the activity that precipitated the honor. With the 100 character limit, we recommend quantifying the value of the award to the greatest degree possible. So you could include the technical qualifications for the honor or award, or the number of students in the group from which the honorees were selected, and the number of honorees. So five honorees of a pool of 1,000 is obviously pretty impressive. With five slots available, you should try to fill them all if possible. 
it's a good opportunity to show admissions officers that you are talented and accomplished in both your academic and extracurricular pursuits. For our last question of today, Jackson asks, when should you stop an extracurricular and will dropping a major school activity affect your college chances? Deciding to drop an extracurricular might happen for many reasons, but the main ones tend to be that you no longer have time for the activity, you no longer actually enjoy the activity, or you just don't feel committed to that particular activity. There are a couple of things to think about regarding how quitting an extracurricular may affect your college applications. First, you want to think about how closely the extracurricular relates to your college application profile. If the activity you're considering dropping helps demonstrate your goals and shows clear interest in your attended major or field, it may be not worth dropping because you might be hurting your chances for college admissions. Then you should consider how much time you've devoted to the activity. If you've already invested a great deal of time and effort into an organization, you may want to think twice about quitting it because you of course want to realize the return on investment of all of that time. However, quitting won't be as significant for activities that aren't that closely related to your field of interest or that you had a relatively small role in. If you also feel as though you need to quit an extracurricular because your time is limited or you need to devote more energy to your academic success, you know, you want to look at that trade-off. Getting an A in a class might be more important than keeping a relatively minor extracurricular. As a general rule of thumb, if you don't enjoy an activity or feel particularly committed, there's of course no reason to stay. Colleges can usually tell if you're only doing something for the sake of putting it on your applications, so it's better to make room for the things that you actually genuinely enjoy. Thank you to all of those today who submitted questions, and hopefully there were some helpful answers for you. If you have a question that you want us to answer, remember to submit that in the comments below. And of course, don't forget that if you're looking for free guidance on your essays, your applications, and more, you can visit our platform, which is app.collegevine.com, and sign up for a free account to organize your applications process. But until then, we will see you soon for our next Q&A.